another episode of Maxwell Stars Beer Reviews. Got something extra special for you tonight from the brewery in Halifax, Garrison. Gonna take a look at a beer that I picked up directly at the brewery in my trip to Halifax back in June. It's now September. Better get a, a look at it. Uh, it's a beer that I was actually previously available here as recently as winter 2009, I believe. I had it back then. Um, I'm really, really stoked to get a chance to try it again, especially now that I'm doing beer reviews. So I'm going to take a look tonight at Garrison's Grand Baltic Porter, a big beer whop, uh, weighing in at a whopping 9% ABV. Now, to those people who don't know what a Baltic Porter is, a Baltic Porter is a porter style of beer, but brewed in the fashion that the Baltic countries used to brew them. In that, uh, it's a, they're kind of like their answer to the British style of English uh, English porter, but made with lager yeasts, and is uh, as a result is uh, bottom fermenting, using a bottom fermenting yeast and lagered at cold temperatures. So technically, this is a lager, uh, but it's also a very very big porter. So it says on the side here, it says enjoy this smooth complex lager brewed coffee black with rich molasses and toffee profile balanced by specialty uh, German hops. Luxurious on a cold Baltic night. Skull. Uh, it actually says on the side here that in 2009 and in 2011 this took the, uh, the gold medal for its category in uh, at the Canadian Brewing Awards. So it says water, barley malt, hops, uh, molasses and dates. So it's actually got some pretty eccentric ingredients in here as well which should prove to be pretty good. Um, it's got this little fake foil cap on it, but underneath it should be the standard, let's peel that right off, uh, it's got the standard Garrison Ken, uh, logo on it, uh, which is also present on the front of the label, which is really, really nice looking label, that's a beautiful looking label. Uh, return for refund where applicable, and if I decide to save the bottle or not. So, pop drop off of this one, and get drinking, yeah. Here. So, I don't think it was brewed all that much, all that longer ago when I picked it up in June. I think it was sometime during the spring. And it's a big 9% beer, so I can't imagine it going bad. Just look at that. There's still some in the bottle. I can't get it all out. If I recall correctly, there's going to be some sediment. Head seems to be dying off rather quickly. Some strange smells off the top too. Oh, yuck! <laughs> Pouring that last little bit that had all the sediment in it—it it was kind of gross looking. It looked like, um, well, I'm not going to repeat it here. It might lose, might lose your appetite, but it was really like this creamy milk chocolate kind of uh, color going into it. It's definitely not filtered. Looking at that, I mean, it's dark for the most part. But it almost looks barley wineish in its color. I mean, it's definitely not filtered. Um, so raisin kind of brown. It's got some reddish hues down at the bottom. But it's hard to make any kind of dimension around it. Like usually they'll have a, a steep gradient because of the cloudiness. It's just kind of this weird mold apple cider look. Like maybe not mold. It's a little too dark for that. But it's it's almost like some kind of wintry beverage that's got a lot of cinnamon in it. Just loaded with cinnamon. Now I don't think this has got cinnamon in it. I'm just trying to purvey that kind of idea. This looks really, really cloudy. Uh, from what I can see here, I can still make out some carbonation coming up along the sides. And that head that was dying quickly at first has now subsided into about a three quarters of a finger, um, kind of a thick, kind of dense bubble, uh, which you know what, that's impressive, um, considering I thought that head was going to die off rather quickly. Now it looks like it's going to stay the distance. Hmm. So let's give it a sniff. Now I did say it had some strange smells on it. You can definitely pick out the molasses and dates. It's got the dark fruity smell. A little bit of sweetness. There's also a little bit of like cocoa powder. Raisins. It smells like apples. They're faint. They're buried in with the smells. You also get this big yeasty dustiness in the top of it. Which almost smells something like like leather. Like dusty leather. 
not quite. That, that's almost making it sound worse than it is. It's very faint, but you definitely tell there's some dust there. It's like a bitter yeast. Not picking up a whole lot of hops. Imagine somewhere in that malty sweetness that I'm getting, which is faint. It's not a very sweet smelling beer. I'm getting a little bit of like an earthy hop. They said it was German styled hops though, so I was kind of I'm kind of expecting like an herbal note. Mm. Let's give it a taste. Down the hatch. Whoa. Woo! That's nine percent already. You know what? It's not so much the alcohol that you really taste. It's almost like it's... You almost got like this punchy impact, but it's more the flavor that's really getting you. It's big on this chocolate. Earthy. Almost dirty, but not in a bad way kind of taste. Oh, wow. There's a lot of lingering earthiness. But not, again, not in a bad way. It's thick with the chocolate, the, the dates, the molasses, almost raisiny, but a big, earthy cocoa powder finish. And a big use of chocolate malt. Ooh. And it comes off strong. There's almost like a booziness, like a a small alcohol burn and it's definitely warming down the throat but it's almost masked well with the, the big malty uh, edge on the front you probably age this uh, I know it's a lager style beer but it's probably something like sandwich louse where you can actually like age it for a couple of years and see if it mellows out I can see this thing mellowing it's wow it's definitely got a bit of an alcoholic stringency coming from the very back, but it's balanced, and that's something you don't really think of. Like it's not like straight grain alcohol on the back. It's it's weighing. Oh wow! It's 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 not like straight grain alcohol on the back. The malts are big enough as well to stand up and lay over it like a blanket. And it really comes together as a well white made package. And it's smooth too. It comes down nice and smooth. And even with that, it almost, other than the big malty sweetness that lingers in the very back from the molasses, it's just, it almost, whew, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it almost doesn't weigh that heavy on it. It's, it's, it feels, it tastes thick, feels a little thick, but once you drink it, it almost disappears. There's like a little bit of like an earthy wetness, and that's it. Well, I'm gonna have to sit down with this one a bit uh, and come back with some thoughts. I really need to gather myself around this one. That's one potent beer. All right, I'll be right back. Garrison's Grand Baltic Porter. So, what did I think about this particular beer? Delicious. I really like this. I almost think I like this better than um, uh, that Brewdog Alice Porter that I had. That was also a Baltic Porter style. This is a uh, really well-made, really well-crafted beer and available exclusively in the Maritimes. I hope that uh, everybody else in Canada or in the world someday gets a chance to try this one because it is an excellent, excellent Baltic Porter. Um... It's one thing I gotta say though, 9% ABV, this thing is hitting me like a ton of bricks. I haven't had that much beer tonight, and I'm starting to really feel it up here. I've drank about that much. 9%, wow. It's almost deceiving in how it comes off. I mean, really, that alcohol, it's there. You taste it's there. Uh, it's masked fairly well though, underneath all the malt, and you keep drinking it because this beer just tastes so good. Uh, the big thing though, is that 9% when you really catch up to you and uh, as you're tasting this beer and tasting how good this beer is you can lose yourself in it and I certainly have tonight right. not saying I'm a cheap drunk or anything uh, but uh, maybe it's just because I haven't had much beer in the last little while taking the last couple of weeks off off of reviewing anyway 
Um, like off camera, that is. Anyway, I think I think I'm gonna give this one a high four, a four point two five out of five. Um, I just don't feel like it's good enough to give it anything like a the much exalted four point five or high four point five. I really do like this beer. I really do approve of this beer. It's not absolutely phenomenal. I almost feel like this beer is coming somewhere in the ballpark of like a a combination of like an English barley wine and a oh a Belgian double where it's got that dusty yeastiness as well as maybe a German Doppelbach and the fact that it's almost lighter body. It's thick yet lighter like a lager is. It's just uh, like a, your typical lager style Doppelbach. Um, it's definitely an interesting style and something I definitely recommend you pick up if you can get a chance to try it because it's definitely a good beer. Anyway, so high 4.2, uh, sorry, high uh, 4.25 out of 5 for me, Maxwell Star. Thanks for watching my review of Garrison's Ram Baltic Porter, 9% ABV, and it certainly uh, is hitting me like one. Whee! All right, thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you later. Cheers. Thank you.